One of the biggest unanswered questions from the fallout over the House Intelligence Chair, Devin Nunes, bombshell claims on Trump surveillance. Who was his source that he met with on White House grounds the day before he told the president about the information he learned? We go to the executive branch uh, at least once or twice a week. This is not unusual because there are intelligence products that we don't have access to uh, in the House of Representatives, uh, but we do have the clearances to see them. There was no sneaking around. I walked in, I, I walked onto the ground, said hi to people. Uh, you know, did not go to the West Wing, did not talk to the president. Nunes told Bloomberg his source was an intelligence official, not a White House staffer. The president seized on Nunes' surveillance claim as vindication for his still unproven accusations that President Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. And even Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee still don't know what information Nunes has. Joining me now, John McLaughlin, who is the former acting director for the CIA. It gets curiouser and curiouser. All right, so help us take us through how something like this could have happened because there are a lot of moving parts. Congressman Nunes says he was on the grounds of the White House, was shown this information from an intelligence source. So if it wasn't a White House staffer, what kind of information could this have been and what kind of access could have been provided that he couldn't get somewhere else? Well, it's very hard to understand that. I think he could have gotten this access on Capitol Hill, actually. Um, we don't know who provided it. Uh, there is an intelligence staff at the National Security Council, usually headed by an intelligence officer who's been detailed there. Sheer speculation that it could have been that person. It could have been someone who traveled down to that complex to meet with him. Um, we, we just don't know that. And the information itself, again, obviously we don't know, uh, but it could have been, um, as referred, incidental collection, just basically some people associated with Trump mentioned in some intelligence that was picked up. Given the fact that he's backed off. But uh, it's bizarre. Uh, let, let, me, yeah, okay. let me just make clear, this is total, totally off the chart behavior. I mean, I've been the subject of congressional oversight for 30 decades, years. Decades, right? Yeah. Decades. And I followed it very closely since leaving the government. And I can't imagine this happening under any former uh, so, so what's of the going on here? Committee. I mean, he has since backed off his claim yeah. about uh, Trump getting caught up in incidental uh, collection. What does your gut tell you then about what's happening here? Well, leaving aside the substance of what he may have heard, I mean, I don't really need my gut to tell me. I mean, my head tells me that this committee cannot function in oversight anymore. They've, Devin Nunes has to step aside. Well, I think, Can the Senate I, and I, FBI go forward and we get to the bottom of this? I, I think the Senate could go forward. The FBI will go forward. They've got a counterintelligence investigation underway. But frankly, what we're seeing here is the commingling in, a, in I think, a very unhealthy way of the, the very things that constitute the checks and balances of our democracy. That is, the, over, the, the executive branch and the congressional branch, the latter having oversight over the executive. And I think the sooner uh, people on the Hill come to the conclusion that they need a Senate Select Committee or a Select Committee of the Congress to look at this, to get it out of the partisan politics, uh, and that's, to me, almost an inevitable decision. They're just, uh, it's just a matter of the clock ticking till they get to that point, the better we'll, off, we'll all be. From your experience over these 30 years and also obviously as acting director, you know how these things tend to unfold. So help people out there who are trying to make their way through this. It's kind of a viewer's guide, yeah, if you will. Yeah. What to look for, what to watch for as this investigation unfolds? Well, I think what we have to watch for here is to what degree, first, let me back up and say, you gotta get to 30,000 feet on this. What we're seeing here is the most effective covert uh, operation that Russia has carried out in decades, particularly you aimed really at the mean United States. I mean that. In other the words, single most effective covert operation Russia has carried out? On the United States. In other words, they've messed with our election. As a result of that, we now have uh, both parties fighting each other. We have our Congress immobilized. We have war between Congress and the White House. Within the White House, we have apparently some degree of chaos. And that all comes from the fact that we're trying to figure out what did the Russians do here? Can I interrupt you for, for my own question? Because I'm going to go back to the viewer's guide. But you just used the word war. So did Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney said this. I want to play it and get your yeah, reaction sure. on the other side. There's not any argument that at this stage that somehow the election of, of President Trump was not legitimate, but there's no question but what there was a very serious effort made by Mr. Putin and uh, 
and his, uh, his government and his organization to interfere in major ways with our basic fundamental democratic processes. In some quarters, that would be considered an act of war. I think it's the kind of conduct and activity we'll see going forward. What do you think? Well, I think um, we're all still debating how to think about cyber attacks. Uh, one theory is that cyber attacks do constitute an act of war. Another thought is that's going too far. I think what we do know for sure is that cyber attacks constitute dramatic interference in our democracy. And what is more important to us than our democratic system here? Uh, I really think it's time, way over time, for uh, politicians on the Hill and the White House to put a uh, country ahead of party here. This is a very serious situation we're dealing with. And back to my original question, what to look for next? Well, here, here's a problem, Chris. I don't think we're going to get to the bottom of this by what individuals have to say in a piecemeal manner. We're all wondering now, well, what would Sally Yates have said? Uh, what will uh, Jared Kushner say and so forth? Each of those little bits of testimony will o only open up a whole series of other questions. We need a select committee to take this behind closed doors, figure out the big picture, the context, and then start going public with their findings. So I think what to look for next is the breaking point here when people in Congress realize they can't do this uh, in using the procedures they're relying on now. Yes or no, you think that breaking point is coming? I think it's coming. I'd bet, I'd bet money on it. Really? John McLaughlin, fantastic uh, conversation. Thank you so much. I always appreciate your expertise. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.